Gabby, friends, around your flickering campfires and listen to tales of daring, dragons, and high adventure from the Whiskock pages of history. As you may have guessed, listener, we're still in the land of his fathers. For the second instalment of The Last Action King of Wales, here on The Silly Hestery Boys Show Now. Yeah, more like killer whales, you little English germs. For in the last episode, well, I say last episode, it was a little while ago because you know how long I take to do these things. In the last episode about this, the terrible Taff had laid out Mercia's finest at the Battle of Rida Gross. Never heard of it. Typical English history types with a one-eyed, one-country version of history. Bob, Bob. This intro to some obscure Welsh history is Dragon On. And we'd all like to know how King Griff founds an independent kingdom of the Welsh that lasts until present day. Um, yes. Yes, we best crack on to the next bit of the story, which begins at the monastery of Llambaron Fawr in the kingdom of Denhaberth in mid-Wales. Sorry, Steve, I didn't ask you the pronunciation of that one. Die! Die! How are those sandwiches coming along? Well! But time with me, I, to be honest, I was just struggling with the dietary requirements, so I've, I've tried to do something that everyone will be happy with. The monastery coffee morning is of enormous import. Bro, to me now. I, I, I've only made the hundred and forty thousand. What fillings? It varies. On what? On what flavour crisps are in there? Crisps. Yeah, I just made 140,000 banana and crisp sandwiches. Die, it would take an army to eat all of them. An army of complete idiots at that. What da, my lovelies. It is I, King Griffith Ap Llewellyn. What's the meaning of this, then? This is a house of God and his mates, and we've got a coffee morning on. Don't worry, vicar. As a king, me and God are like that. Mime's conciliatory gesture. You're no king of ours, you northern monkey. Your king, Howell Ap Edwin, bows and scrapes to your Saxon neighbours. But I am king of Gwyneth, Powers, and I claimed and Haberth as my father before me, and all Britain after that. The lands that were taken from your ancestors can be yours again. And if we refuse? Well, it's the 11th century, pal, and I'm a king, so you either do what I say or it's fire and sword. You can make your minds up while you pack up all those sandwiches. My men will need the sustenance. Uh, oh my god, are they banana and... And crisps, yes. Dear me, well, I suppose there's a war on it. Uh, save the prawn cocktail for me. Pack them up, lads! After his battle with the Mercians, Griff turned his army on the Kingdom of South Wales. There, he sought to convince the people to accept him as their king. How did he do that? Public holidays? A new leisure centre? Abolishing the 20 mile an hour speed limit in Wales? No, it was mostly fire. King Griff was not a romantic Celtic hero, but he was... Pretty effective. In 1041, at the Battle of Pendercare, he did a number on King Howell and claimed South Wales as his own. I'm sure all the people on fire were delighted. Um, yes, it's no doubt. But it was rather worse for King Howell, who lost rather more than land to Griff. <laughs> Your Majesty! Your Majesty! Your Majesty, it's not very kingly to uh... hide in your room, slaughtered and crying. Well, you would if, if. <laughs> no one is saying breakups aren't tough, King Hal. It's not a breakup. Uh, that that Matt Griff has stolen my wife. Well, we don't know that exactly. The chronicles aren't clear. Maybe she just ran off with him. Oops, sorry. So sorry. You know, uh, we can always come back later. If this is a, you know, bad time. My lord, please, if you could just wipe some, yes, that's it, some key areas. I brought some gentlemen to see you. What, what, what kind of gentlemen? Well, we're Vikings. Irish Vikings, in fact. We kill people for money. 
So if this Griff fella's run off with your dog... <coughs> wife. Oh, sorry, wife. Me and the lads, we'd be happy to oblige you. With murder, obviously. Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> Grand stuff, so. Now, cash our card. And uh, how many bits do you want him in? Lucky. Send word to King Griff and tell him we are ready to negotiate. Are we? No. No. <laughs> and so a meeting was arranged between the two Welsh kings. The chronicles do not record where. But let us imagine it took place in a spooky forest. A spooky forest where King Griff and his Infidians now march into a deadly trap. I've got a bad feeling about this, boss. Me and all, boss. I've heard this is a duplicitous forest. It's all too faith. <laughs> I feel like you're trying to say deciduous, but I can't be sure. It's not the worst gag we've ever done, but it is. Regardless, boys, I am quite sure that we have nothing to fear. The hidings that we have given the good King Howl of late must have convinced him to negotiate. Is that living with me parents again, Buff? I can't shake the feeling that we're being watched. Oh, that's it. I'm deleting me internet history. Oh, I hope this spooky forest isn't making you uncomfortable, Griff. That's King Griff to you, Howl, you little jerk. And the missus sends her regards. <laughs> oh, burn. You gonna surrender South Wales to me then, or what? I'm afraid you got the wrong end of the stick there, bet. I went out and hired the best Viking mercenaries many can buy. <laughs> Half of the casual racism to you. So I'm not giving you jack. <laughs> Get in, my Get good boys. boys. Oh, knickers. From the trees, a volley of deadly ah, sharp oh, things ah, slides oh, into oh, our oh. And a horny, helmeted horde rushes oh, from the undergrowth. Horned helmets, as not historically accurate. Hey, the diads, all fast. From high above, a comedy sack drops on King Griff's head. <laughs> gotcha! You're sacked, Griff. <laughs> oh no, boss! I depend on you for Jim Cash! Get him, lads! Under the shadowy trees, an almighty Hiberno Viking Celtic dust up ensues. Oh. <laughs> but all the erstwhile King of Wales can see is the rough sack oh. over his bones. Put you down! I'm King of Wales! King of Wales! The amount you weigh! How dare you! Jesus! This is worse than Aldi on a Monday morning! <laughs> Hours later, the King awakes. Oh! Oh! Oh, they've done that cheap Game of Thrones trick so they don't have to do a whole battle. Spears and, and someone spill jam every... Oh, no. Uh, uh, we got them both. They were a bit choppy, but we thought they will take him our kings off before they could kidnap. Oh, God. Oh, God, terrible headache. Yeah, I don't know, man. I might have something to do with the Hiberno Norse battle axe buried in your thod. Sorry, man. I can't hear you over well, that heavenly choir. Oh, is that me auntie beckoning me from the bright wild? Is it your fit auntie? No, oh, the dead one. Hang on. Oh. oh, my poor brave idiots. So many dead in my service. I shall need even bigger idiots to replace them. But where to find one? King's Pawn 4 to King's Bishop 3. Check. What? How, how did... Oh no, I didn't see that. Is that checkmate? You son of a bitch. <coughs> My lord, 
You're not licking the plug sockets again, are you? What? And spoil my dinner? Carl, you're not thinking! Are you playing chess? With the dog? Dude, she's cheating! I keep telling you, sir, she's a dog. She can't play chess. Tell her that, Kev. She's had three triple worth scores. That's... never mind. There's someone to see you, my lord. All right, my wax is here. I need to be smooth and shiny for the Hertfordshire surf season. Hey, make sure he's not afraid to really go after that mankini line, Kev. I'm ever so sorry. I feel like I'm not in the right place. I have come here for an audience with Swine Godwin, Earl of Hereford and heir to the mighty House of Godwin, and you're a bloke in a mankini playing chess with a dog. Blackjack! Take that, you dumb dog! Huh. I'm Sven, dude! Who wants to know? I am Griffith, King of the Britons, and to be 100% clear, I am not waxing anything. Lame! Instead, I come with a proposal. I accept! You can live in the secret annex with the rest of them. For the love of God, let me finish. I know, Earl Spine, that you cannot extend your lands without causing civil war in England. All the other lame earls who are super jelly of us awesome Godwins, bro. So instead, I offer you an all-expenses-paid murder-and-stealing holiday to sunny South Wales. Anything you don't burn, you can keep. And if you ever have trouble with your rivals in England, then you shall have the armies of Wales to back you up. Hey, let's get our mankini slicked and go on holiday! Kev, wax on, bro! With the help of Svein Godwin from episode 78 of the Silly History Boy show, Griff bought yet more of Wales under his rule, finally killing Howl Ap Edwin and becoming king of Denhaber, which is now a smoking hole in the ground. Wife then? Murder holidays with the English aristocracy, on his own people. I'm ashamed to be exactly 8% related to this guy. So enough of how Welsh you are. And also, stop judging people from history by modern standards. Such a cold, cynical English attitude. I can't help how passionate and Celtic I am. I bite you so hard. Sorry. <clears throat> What King Griff was doing was what all great future rulers of Wales would go on to do, and ones in the past as well, use the English aristocracy's very bad habit of feuding with themselves to increase his own power. Here's a thing worth remembering, listener. History people were out for themselves, and being Welsh or English or anything else was not important to them. Was that a hot take? It was. Come at us, history nutters, and bring your dinner. It was all coming up Griff. Within five years of becoming king, he had matched his dad's record of ruling Gwyneth, Powys, and Haberth, And seen off a horde of Irish Vikings and his Mercian neighbours. And speaking of the neighbours, big change was coming to England. In 1042, while Griff was deep in Denhaven, Edward the Confessor was crowned King of England. And with him, he brought dozens of Norman allies on. These thirsty Normans began challenging the most powerful family in England, the Godwins, including King Griff's pal, Spain. Yes, we do keep going on about episode 78, but honestly, it's all there. And the worst of these thirsty Normans was this guy, Ralph Mott. Hello, mate. Name's Ralph. I'm new cock and neighbourhood, OK? Just kidding. Or am I? Yeah, man, I'm buzzing. Just over from Normandy. Heard of it, yeah? Better than her, our kid. Wine, architecture and trams. You got trams here? And I thought not. Still looking forward to settling in and oppressing the place. When's the milk come? Can I have yours? Thanks, our kid. Safe. We can only pray that there is never an 11th century Normans reunion tour. Meanwhile, in Wales... Well, Spain, old pal, we did it. Another chunk of Wales brought under my rule. Gnarly King Bro, dude! Why, why do places smell so much better on fire? I don't know, but they do. 
And I'll say this for you, Spain. For a Saxon, you're an alright kind of guy. You know, Griff, dude. For a Welsh jabroni, you're okay too. Thanks, dude. Now, have you got all the stuff that you stole? <laughs> got my swag, my bro! Why do churches have such nice stuff? Well, it's a priory, actually, but. Really? Wow! Awesome! <laughs> What? What's a priory? No, no, wait, 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 wait. You jerks! Who is Look that? Look at prior, all on fire and whatnot. Uh, I think that's the prioress, like, uh, like an important nun. Are you all right? She will be mine. Oh yes, she will be mine. Swing, Svein, It's it's history time. You you can't date nuns. It's okay. All I need is time to talk her around. And a big sack. You, none, dude. Is that a sack? Oh, I keep telling you people, God is my exclusive BF. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. Oi, you, Sven Godwinson. I, Ralph Monson Normandy. Hereby arrest and detain you in the name of King Edward of England. Dude, this isn't a crime! Yes, it is! I'm telling Jesus on you! For the crime of non theft, your earldom of Hereford is given to me and that. What lame, bro? Wait till my daddy hears about this! Go tell your dad, you Saxon crybaby. My uncle, the king, is gonna use this non theft beef. To have all you Godwins thrown out of England? Never! All right, pal, I'm Griffith Achlo Ellen. I'm king of next door. Uh, do you want to add into the West of Britain WhatsApp group, is it? I've heard of you, Griff App Numpty, and there'll be no more cozying up to you to have some my watch. Like that, is it? Fine. Never mind, Norman. You'll just have to get used to watching me and my amphibians disappearing over the border. With all your stuff. You leave my gear alone, I'll chase you, I will. Try it, son. I hope you like rain and ambushes. Now! They're getting away, boss. And they stole all our cattle and metro passes. Don't worry, John. We'll get them with our special move from back home. What? Trams? Oh, yeah, trams. No, not trams, you idiot. Castles. All oh, right. We will begin the network of castles that we Normans will use to dominate this gimpy country. And then connect them up with trams. No, sure. It was a time of upheaval. England teetered on the edge of civil war, but in the end, Spain and the Godwins were thrown out of the country and exiled. Glory oh, to right Mercia! Mercia. Mercia. Oh, he's back! It's Leofric! Oh, Here he comes Mercia. again! It was great news for the king and his Norman mates, plus all the rest of England who hated the Godwins. It was less good news for King Griff. With Svein gone, he now had a hostile Hereford full of grabby Normans on his border, who had already started doing what Normans do best and throwing up castles all over the shop. But Griff made the best of it by immediately launching raids into Hereford. How many of you got, but? Oh, well, I think that's four. Who would have thought that cows would be so difficult to get in your pockets? I wore my big coat, see. Oh, you! You Welshers must not be stealing our cows. The penalty for rustling is death, you know. What's that about restless? I've not got the pumpity ping. Come on, run! After him, they're stealing our cows. Lord, Lord, I'm moving. In as fast as you can, my lord. <laughs> Charge, my Norman lords, into that sinister, misty valley that our beef is being lifted. <laughs> nice one, boss. They'll sort out any ambushes right out, won't they? Aye, they'll sort that ambush right out. <laughs> Oh, so much more than English. Ah. oh no, boss! Oh, they've been ambushed like a fella said, but wiped out and it blur before our eyes. Oh, I ain't blur. Told you, neighbour! 
rain and ambushes. Call again any time you like. Ta-ra! Right, I'm fed up of this. Make ready. We're going to that bit of Wales that fella doesn't own. Could we get a tram? Shut up! The only bit of Wales that our Norman friend refers to is the southeastern corner, which we in our modern times know as Glamorgan. There lives King Griffith of Ruddock, our Griff's final obstacle to becoming king of all Wales. Griff of Glamorgan is a powerful king who has given his English neighbours almost as much trouble as our King Griff. Two, two, two Griffs! Bob, Bob! This is confusing! It is, isn't it? Griff of Abraduk's power base was centred around the old Roman fortress of Caer Leon, close to the modern town of Newport. All right, Quartz! Yes! yes. No, I have gathered you all the other day in there to reveal my manifesto! Oh, as you know, our in the face raiding style has made us fear and powerful, in it. Oh, yes. But I now reveal our strategy for the domination of all Wales, in it. Oh, With the help of our Norman neighbours, we will humble the upstart Northerner Griffith of Llewellyn and take back the kingdom of Denhaberth, in it. In 1047, disaster befell King Griff, when another Welsh king, also called Griff, attacked his land in Den Haber. Bob Bob, this is confusing. And if anyone appreciates confusing, it's me. I know it is. Why do you think I've been avoiding actual dates? Wales was in danger of sliding back into its default mode, fighting itself. Not this time, Bilbo. I'm sure our King Griff has some sort of cunning plan to get rid of this new King Griff. Children of Wales, I hereby attaint the usurper Griffith Athradach. Are you pronouncing that right, boss? Shut up, Chris. I hereby attaint the usurper Griffith Athradach, who has stolen my lands in Den Haberth for his own selfish means. Didn't you also steal that land? Who said you are, Chris? I'm just trying to show the listener that Wales is a country with a complicated past. Well, stop it. Sorry. We will bring our wayward seven brothers back into the fold and show them that a united Wales is the future for all. They shall be persuaded in the traditional manner of killing them and taking all their stuff. Infidions to all! The land of song was eating itself again and it was music to Norman ears. Buzz in, they're fighting each other again. That ought to give us time to finish our castles and continue turning Britain into a massive Arndale. Grim tidings from the east, our milord. The vile Godwins opposed to invade England. The king commands us to the far coast to oppose them. Oh, for flip's sake, when is this episode going to settle down? Very well. Assemble the army. We march east to preserve Norman England. What the bother, my lord? What King Griffin is tasked come robbing? Stop complicating things. We'll leave a portion of our crack. Norman cavalry, eh? That and our mint castles ought to sort them bobbins out. All right, then. I'll tell Darren and Craig. Nice one, our kid. Come on. Let's go sort out them gimpy godwins. Once again, Griff's enemies were looking the other way. But surely he's too occupied with the other King Griff. Bob Bob? Bob Bob? Bob Bob? Is he? Oh, 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 oh. OM gosh, he's dribbling a lot. Judging by the amount of drool, I think we're on for a battle. Oh, shave away, Gavin. Shave away. So, what I was thinking for summer holiday was this. I just don't think chain mail swimming trunks are very practical. And the bikini top, it does not suit you. It honestly does nothing for you. Oh yeah, what bright summer ideas have you got then, eh? These be all. <laughs> and those tapestry trunks? Yeah, mate. Fully illustrated in history of Jukes and Normandy like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look, it's only 1052, so there's only been six of them. <laughs> and um, Excuse me. What? what? Are you the Norman cavalry tasked with guarding the Herefordshire border? No, no he, he is. is. So both of you are. 
No, mate. These are just big greyhounds. Yeah, they're massive, aren't they? So leave us alone, you little Saxon greb. I wish to report a robbery of purest Leominster gold. Here, yeah, Darren, that sounds important. An entire flock of it. Those naughty Welshers came over the border and half inched the lot. What? The flock of gold? That sounds a lot. Saddle up, Andre. Let's get after them leaks, isn't it? Regardless of the local scrap with his Welsh neighbours, King Griff apparently couldn't resist nipping over the border into Hereford for a stealing trip. The town of Leominster was famous for its wealth. Ooh, is that the Leominster gold? Well, no. In fact, Leominster gold is distinctly woolly. It's it's what? Sorry, did you did you say woolly? <laughs> yes. Apparently, I know things again. Doing. <laughs> Come on, you lot. These sheep are worth a fortune, you know. The longer we stay this side of the border, the more likely people are to make unkind jokes. I know, I know, and of course you love sheep. I'll ask you to rephrase that. I am merely referring to your natural affinity with animals. Well, thanks. And anything else you've heard is a filthy lie. Did anyone say unkind jokes? Or crack Norman cavalry squadron? No one said crack Norman cavalry squadron. Oh, well, we are one. It were too good a quip not to make. I think you're being very generous to yourself there. Then allow us to share with you some more Norman generosity. By that we mean cut your bits off and there'll be bits you'll miss. I don't like where this is going. Yeah, no, I think you're right there. Run! Run for the border! After them, Arcade! Horses go now! Come on, boys! Back towards the border, the Normans pursue the Welsh raiders and their woolly prize. The raiders leave the road and head for the high ground, hoping to avoid pursuit on the rolling hills. But the hoofbeats sound louder and louder until... Oh, the river! Did you bring your crocs? On a cattle reed in the 11th century? Of course I did. Well, that's as maybe. Have we got any crocs for the sheep? Oh, knickers. Start editing your bodies. Oh, Nick has retrapped. Right, there's only one way out of this. Either an unlikely and historically inaccurate rescue, or we use your supernatural affinity with animals. That's two ways. Shush. We have to use the sheep. Right, Darren, we have our lightly armed adversaries trapped and at our mercy. It's only a matter of launching a charge in the most lethal heavy cavalry in early medieval Europe to dispatch them kicking and screaming to their deaths. Yeah, okay. Right, okay then, let's... Well, let's do that then. Yeah, fine, whatever. Well, try and show some enthusiasm, you spotty little butt cheek. All right, I will. For the Earl and for the Duke! Charge! Happy now! The Norman knights kick their mighty steeds forward. The earth shakes beneath the mass of man, male and beast. They thunder forward as one, and down go the lethal lances. But opposing them is a wall of wool, as panicked sheep rush forward. Lying by the Hey, get out, roar! Whipping clouds and faces everywhere! Swerving to avoid the fleeing fleeces, the charge loses its order and brings the Normans into the waiting Welsh point. Ah! It's that you Northern jerks! Yeah, we pulled the wool over their eyes. Yeah! Oh, hang on, they're coming back. Oh, no. The Norman cavalry wheels back around for another charge. And this time, there are no sheep to disrupt them. Here, your majesty, take my crocs and swim the river. It'll be an honor to lay down my life for my king. That's all right, but that won't be necessary. For I think that that is more than enough of our Norman friends committed for this. No, Chris! The horizon sprouts spears, and the summer sun glints off mirrored steel. From the hills behind the river, horsemen spill down into the valley. Ambush! Oh, Darren, man. we're rumbled! Hey, you got any crocs? What do I look like? A dad what's given up? Good luck getting through that river then. Bam bam, badaladalam, badaladalam, bam bam, see you later, bye. Oh, 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 oh,
You wouldn't think we were 40. Charge! The vaulted horsemen of Normandy scatter, lest they be trapped by the four-legged fierceness flowing down toward them. Welsh light horsemen with bows and javelins outstrip the mailed Normans, and on the heavy Hereford earth they get a taste of their own mountain medicine. Those that live limp back to Leominster with terrible tales that will begin a rivalry that will last another two centuries. It's Wales versus the Normans, round one. First blood to Cymru. Now I think you've had quite enough excitement now. And stop pulling it. Sorry. And there you have it, listener. The one and only accurate depiction of the Battle of Leominster in media. Well, have you been embellishing again? It's a funny way of pronouncing lying, but yes, I am. Uh, and I have a good reason, because honestly, I can find no details on the Battle of Leominster or the Battle of Cnefli in any of my big, dusty history books on Welsh history. And <laughs> that chance it's going to be in any of the English ones. So you've had a muck about, have you? Yep. Well, that puts the Norman conquest of Wales in the bin, then. Um... um... Fine. I know it probably doesn't because I said it. <laughs> of course, but that's all to come here on The Silly History Boys Show. Yeah, but when? Soon, but not yet. We've not even started the final chapter in the tale of the last King of Wales, and it's the best bit. Oh, good. Our listeners in Nigeria will be thrilled. Our listenership in Wales has doubled, the Ock friends. Is that because of your Uncle Rob and Cousin Steve? Probably. And so, for nutting all those Normans, worrying all those sheep, and all that oh-so-entertaining embellishment, we are, as always, Sorry! Sorry! Sorry. Wales, Wales on the Normans, or episode 98 of the Silly History Boys show was written and produced by the Silly History Boys. The parts of King Howell of Den Haver, a very weepy king indeed, a Mancunian Norman henchman, some heroic Welsh soldiers, and various other voices were given voice by Tom Tombo Furmore. The essential roles of a butler, another kind of a butler called Kev, criminal Chris, Ralph Mont, the big Norman baddie, peasant Bilbo, a horrible Norman henchman, were all given rolly voice by Will, Uncle Bilbo Tristram. I was just trying to do a variation on roll, Will, before you get upset. Um, I like you. The roles of a big Welsh bishop and crisp lover, an idiot Infidian Welsh soldier, Spain, the nun-stealing elder son of Earl Godwin, an idiot slash Jude, <laughs> and Leofric, the brummy lord of Mercia. I could have sworn he was going to be in it more, but he wasn't. And a horrible Norman henchman were given voice by the uncredited in previous weeks, Stu the Pear Bear Perry. Pack it up, pack it in, let me begin thanking... Ashlyn Line of Lashing Rain voiceover for her fantastic murderous Irish Vikings, a descendant of Dublin with Titanic skill. Someone must tell the House of Pain that the Titanic was built in Belfast. Never mind! Doing the boring voice of a woman, which she won't be very happy about at all, and who can blame her? It's Gemma Velma von Bobbo playing the poor old kidnapped prioress of Leominster. And, humbly, I've saved myself to last. The parts of Di, a shrill Welsh old lady, a very clever dog, some Normans, did anyone say unkind jokes, and the last king of Wales, Griffith Afruelin, were given voice by me, your dear Uncle Bob Bob. Zaps, Splats and Boyings were given to us by the fantastic Zapsplat of Zapsplat.com. A huge cacophony of music was given voice by Zapsplat once again, uh, Jez Hewitt of Jez Hewitt Music, oh I tell you what, that track's amazing, and Faraja Faraji for the track The Sons of Mars. And also, we are invited to say Diach Diachenvar to Lord Fastingus Tristram for the Silly History Boys show theme tune. 
if you have enjoyed this particularly silly episode of the Silly History Boy Show, then please do rate and review on your chosen podcast platform. Thanks very much to whoever's just given us a nice rating on Apple. Five stars. Please give us more five-star reviews. We've got, like, two four-star reviews. Why? Just give us five. Just give us... Just give us five. It doesn't matter. You can also check out all our Christmas activities live in Bolsover Castle for the Silly History Boys show on all the social media. Just tap Silly History Boys show into Google. And if you've really enjoyed uh, all our silly episodes, then you can buy us a Ko-Fi on coffee. Or a Ko-Fi on coffee. Um, you can contribute some money to the show. Thank you very much to all our recent contributors. Um, very, very, um, very, very grateful for your kind monetary contributions. I would really like to go for you all, but you, it's an Uncle Bob Bob episode, so we're, we're really the ones here, so I better back in. Listen, we'll be back for more spectacular episode 98. Can you believe it? We're still here. We're still going. Listen, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. I've been your dear Uncle Bob Bob. Thank you for listening to so. See you later. Bye. Ralph. Oh.